Hello everyone. Welcome to Green One Day at a Time. March has finished and so let's have an update on what happened in the allotment for that month. Not a lot of change visually, but we have done a lot of soil preparation for all the vegetables that would be coming in this month to the plots. So here you can see there's a lot of horse manure. It's a rhubarb plant. What we have done is we are slowly but steadily converting all of our plots to a no dig allot uh, allotment so it's lined with a thick layer of cardboard and then a good few inches of horse manure that is how we are going to slowly convert the allotment into a no dig one this plot has a lot of newspaper and cardboard and then compost here we are going to plant potatoes today so those are the potatoes the horse manure is mixed into it and I've sown some fenugreek seeds this is a squash bed so nothing is going to come here till the end of May or beginning of June and by then I would have already harvested those my purple sprouting broccoli have started to sprout but I had to cover it because there was pigeon damage so they are nibbling off the growing shoots so I had to cover them with net to stop the pigeons from making more damage. But I did have some harvest and they were lovely, deep purple ones. Back in February, I sowed some broad beans and radishes here. So the broad beans are coming up now and all the radishes have germinated really well. So again, another thing I'm going to try this year is companion planting or into sowing. So again, here it is broad beans, a different kind of broad beans. I think this is a purple broad bean with the French breakfast radishes. So theory is I would harvest the radishes well before the broad beans would be up and tall and producing the beans had to cover them because we are in the south and the nighttime temperatures are quite low still they are building my husband and son are building a support for runner beans this is pak choy flower very beautiful yellow flowers i've left them for the bees not a lot around at this time so these flowers will serve really good for the bees so this is another into sowing or companion planting so i have sown some shallots with carrots so those are red shallots with resistor fly carrots so there is a row of shallots and carrots rows of shallots and carrots the th again the thought process is that the smell of the shallots would deter the carrot fly from approaching the carrots these are some chives i found in my garden in a pot which i had abandoned they have survived so i just transplanted them here into the allotment in a tire and i'm hoping that they would flourish in here with some new compost they would be growing well for me to harvest surprising that they survived for such a long time even though i'd never watered them at all for the past couple of years these two tires here are soil prepped with horse manure and composed for ready for ochres i'm sprouting some ochres back at home on my winter sill as soon as risk of frost is passed i will plant them Ochres are a root vegetable like potatoes but they do not have any pests or diseases and you can keep them in the ground during winter. They are very lemony and tiny red root vegetables, tubers that you can harvest after the frost hits and you can steam them or even boil them just like potatoes. So the two tires are already prepped 
and I've put a cover on it to keep the rain from draining all the nutrients off. This is the last bit of the allotment that we haven't cultivated anything so far. Last year we laid this tarpaulin to kill all the weeds and its roots and this year we are taking bit by bit and clearing it of all the rocks and roots from the cherry tree that we have on the side and prepping the soil for corn and pumpkins. Here I sowed some Jerusalem artichoke along with some Saxa 2 radishes. So the, again the radishes would be harvested well before the artichokes would become tall. And the last task for the month of March is to plant potatoes. So this is a 6 inch deep trench and we are going to plant each potatoes 12 inch apart. So rather than measuring every time I want to plant a seed potato, I have taken a cane, measured 12 inches and broken it into a piece of 12 inch long and I am going to use that as my measurement so the work would be much faster. So each potatoes would be 12 inch apart, 6 inch deep. And my husband is using a similar technique of 24 inch long cane to mark out the rows. So the calculation is 6 inch deep, 12 inch distance between the spuds and then 24 inch distance between the rows. That should give you a good size spud when you harvest. So there are all the seed potatoes laid down according to the measurement. Now we will close the trench and then continue the process till we finish all the seed potatoes. So we've got one, two, three, four, five rows and I still have a space left for one seed potato. So I will plant another type of seed potato there. So all the seed potatoes are in a trench and later as the sprouts come up, we will mount them from either side to form a little mountain or a hill. So that's it for the month of March. It's been busy. We still have loads of work to do. Soil preparation is almost done for all the major plots. We have got a lot of work related to structures for the climbing plant uh, vegetables. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay safe and see you soon with another one.